open signs and are able to uh, route them somewhere else. So by controlling all the digital data flow, we're able to even um, record the data and also run AI-based uh, algorithms on them so we can um, generate additional information and content for the information. So now I want to go and look at uh, just my patient's anatomy and uh, bring that up here. So I can pull out the images, I can scroll through them, and uh, everybody seeing that says, well, that just works like the iPhone. However, we introduced that technology six months before the iPhone came out. We took the, the idea from the movie Minority Report. We can take all the web anatomy, rotate it, and so now I want to add a tumor to my uh, data set. So I can now go and uh, pull up an AI-based uh, brush tool that allows me to um, outline the information. And uh, I can uh, simply take a brush tool in this area of uh, uh, yeah, what is depicted here as a tumor. The surgeon can just identify roughly what the tumor is. And I've generated a 3D representation of my tumor. So now I want to add fiber tracks, this colorful structure that you've seen just before. And I do that by um, again bringing up um, this view. And um, I now want to see everything um, of all, all of those fibers that are connected uh, you know, through the uh, brainstem. So we can now you know, rotate that, uh, I can change the parameters. But I only want to see the fibers that are passing through the tumor that I've just outlined. So I pull up the tumor to my structure here. And uh, now we can basically say, well, there's a few fibers that are not really meant to be there, but now I can take this and rotate it, and I see how those fibers wrap around the tumor as I'm approaching uh, my, uh, my patient. So this is a database that um, you know, gets all the information together in one digital copy of the patient. So now the, the next challenge is um, how can we aggregate that data so we can also um, use it for AI and machine learning. So in addition to the data already stored at hospitals and the electronic medical records and genetic information, we're adding the anatomical information in a computer processable format. And we're able to define, uh, define from that patient-specific statistical charts and we can also map the patient's anatomy um, with, uh, together with statistical information. So we can create statistical volumetric maps that can predict, for example, certain risks. In this case, it shows the resectability of a tumor mapped onto a specific patient. So um, a very um, exciting opportunity to have better objective decision-making tools for otherwise um, the yeah, personal subjective experience, so both together can provide the best outcomes for a patient. So now we need to map this digital world to the physical world. And in radiation th therapy, we can achieve that by um, yeah, using the brain of exactly system. First of all, we have structured light that is scanning the surface of the patient, and we also have a thermal signature that is co-registered to the same space in the same frame of reference. So we're using a hybrid of different sensors to create a, um, a very stable and a dynamic link between the digital world and the physical world. And then there is x-rays shot from two different angles that allow us to capture the internal anatomy of the patient. So these are all methods that are required to make radiation therapy safe. In brain tumors, for example, we can aim high energy radiation beams from different angles onto all the same uh, tumor so that um, at a very high concentration at the intersection of those beams, we can effectively burn away brain tissue. So it's uh, in a single treatment, you can effectively treat a brain tumor, for example, with a submillimeter precision. So it shows how precise those two um, worlds, the digital and the physical world, need to be correlated. The same is also possible in surgery. So in principle, if we go into the operating room, we also use a GPS system for the human body to um, establish and, cor and to generate that correlation. So that's what I will show you know, here. So don't worry, it's just only a rubber hand. I'm not going to do um, harm to any patient. So, this is my 
instrument that I can track, the cameras here would pick up the position of my pointer, and as I uh, move this around, um, you'll be able to see then the, uh, the image of navigation. And if I bring that here, you can actually see that on the large screen as well. So um, by moving my pointer over the head, you see where the tube is just underneath my pointer. So that's where I need to make the cut. So I'll go and uh, simulate what that cut would uh, look like. And uh, now I can rotate that and see that in fact I'm just uh, above the tumor. I can remove um, here my little uh, flap and uh, now I'm navigating and uh, you can see how I would be able to then pass by those fiber tracks that I've just uh, identified. So this GPS system isn't just available you know, in the brain but you can use the same technology um, to, um, when you get down to the tumor, to digitize the progression of the tumor. Since we know at any given point in time where the instrument is anatomically, um, I'm able to um, then go and, and really digitize the progression of surgery. Or I can insert a catheter with a very high precision or insert a spinal implant. Um, so there's many ways of how this GPS system for the body may be applied. And uh, I can even pick the perfect shape and size of a knee or hip implant to ensure that it ends up exactly where it is supposed to go. All the images are based on data that was obtained prior to surgery and we can now take data during surgery with this interoperative CT scanner or even better, we put the same tracking technology on a um, ultrasound probe and we're able to then um, co-register that to our space. So going back to our uh, digital model of the, of the brain and uh, the ability of how that was mapped, um, all the different structures and uh, you know, every uh, voxel of tissue has properties assigned, elasticity and also how that will change uh, through a finite element model. So we can model any biomechanical um, changes and so now with this interoperative information we're able, visualized by those vectors, and even if there's incomplete information from just one plane of ultrasound, we can simulate how the tissue is changing in 3D. So this is really the crucial technology to bring navigation also into other parts of the body where the tissue is more um, elastic. And then, now as we have established the super high um, accuracy and correlation, what is missing is of course robotics to more precisely implement those features. So um, we've designed a very you know, clever and uh, compact uh, robotic arm that can just be positioned into a um, into a coarse position and then the robotic wrist will adjust um, just in a, in a fine movement the trajectory to perfectly capture the exact position that we want to hit and we want to treat. So from robotics um, I'm going to the microscope which nowadays is also a robotic device to be used in surgery. And a microscope is the most important tool of a neurosurgeon but with the software from BrainLab, we're even taking it um, to a whole different level. And um, I'm just basically bringing up my, uh, my microscope view here, so they can also follow um, what, I'm, what I'm doing here. And um, as I take the microscope and uh, aim with the microscope here onto my uh, tumor, then um, obviously I can only see the exposed part of the brain. However, with um, my technology, I'm able to now um, also see in different layers. As I go further down, you see the fibers and uh, how everything wraps around the tumor. So um, now you may believe that um, this is a confusing display and you may not know what is above and below my focal plane. Well, I can simply take the plane and rotate it so they can actually see which of the structures are wrapping around that. So we can see how in my single model I've been able to bring all the different, all the information um, together and merge into, into one, uh, in one application. 
and I'm also able to um, use my pointer um, and uh, aim it at a particular um, position and have the microscope uh, basically then. too far. So now you see how the microscope is readjusting to my pointer position. So if I have a deep-seated tumor, I can even robotically control where the microscope is aiming. And uh, well, I've been at least uh, able to demonstrate that part. You'd never buy software from a company.